Hi, and welcome back for day three of our journey through scripture. Well, we saw yesterday that this is indeed a chronological study, and so we jumped from Genesis even into the New Testament, and now we're going back to Genesis, specifically chapters three and four. After the great glory and wonder of God's creation, now we have to face the fact that we are not very good about following directions. And so what we see is human beings' rebellion, what's sometimes known as the fall. But when we read through this in Genesis 3 and 4, I want you to notice that there's a pattern here that we see in human sin, not just in this story, but throughout the biblical story, and honestly, in our day-to-day lives, even now. The first of that is the temptation to question God's word. Did God really say? We are looking for loopholes. We're looking for means to get away with things, if you will. But we have a question, we have a tendency to question God's word. The other thing is the false promise of desire. When we're tempted to do something wrong, it's often because there's a promise of something that either we don't believe that God will provide for us because of our own lack of faith or because of our impatience in waiting on God's timing, even though God's timing is perfect and ours ours leaves something to be desired. And then, of course, is the experience of shame and the consequences of our sin. And so as we see these through the stories, both the original fall, Adam and Eve in the garden, as well as Cain in his dealings with his brother Abel, we see this pattern begin to emerge. And it's a pattern that we're going to see over and over and over again. And if we look in our own lives, we'll see it there as well. The fact of the matter is that In all of this, we have a tendency to blame others for sin, refuse to take responsibility for our sinful actions, and that creates a rift between us and God. It causes a rift between us and others whom we sin against. And so as we remember these things, remember that it's not just the sin. It's not just in Cain's case, the offering is being unpleasing, but it's Cain himself who is unpleasing. It's us that is unpleasing when we fall into temptation and sin. I hope that you can see the beginnings of these um uh, the be- yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, the beginnings of these themes that tell us not just the story that we're reading, but tell us something about ourselves from which we can learn and we can appreciate even more God's grace and mercy toward us.